morning. So let's start on a new topic altogether. And after finishing the top down parking, let's start looking at what is bottom up parking. So the new method is the top. So bottom up parking is a method where you start constructing the parts tree from the leaf nodes and then try to reduce the whole of the string to the start symbol. And if we succeed in that, then we say that the string belongs to the language which is specified by the language, uh, by the DAM. Okay. So in this case, you want to construct the parse tree from the input, which we think that the leaf nodes. Okay. Or another way to look at it is that if I say that W is a valid string in the language which is specified, then I should be able to somehow reduce W to the start symbol. This is another way of saying the same thing. So let's look at a grammar. And then let's also, so here is a grammar where I have the start symbol S. So here is a grammar where we have a start symbol. And then corresponding to the production of non-terminal A, I have two rules. And then I have one more rule for B. Okay. And then here is a string I want to parse. So let's take this grammar and try to see whether this string belongs to the language which is specified by the grammar. And how do we go about doing it? What we want to do is we want to reduce the string to the start symbol. Okay. So what we will try to do is we will try to find out a substring here which matches right hand side of a production. And if it matches right hand side of a production, then I'm going to replace that by its left hand side and we'll continue. And hope is that if this is a valid string in the language specified by this grammar, then I should be able to reduce the whole thing eventually to S. Right? So the first thing I do is I say that here is B, which matches right hand side of a production, which says A goes to B. So I replace this by A. And after reduction, my string becomes now this becomes now a sentential form. Okay. Now again, I look through this and I find there is another B. So I just go ahead and try to replace that by its left hand side. And when I do that, okay, I get a string like this. Okay. Now let's again try to see if I can find a pattern on the right hand side. So you notice something A, A, C, D. D matches now. So D can match perhaps this right hand side. Okay? And if I replace that by B, what will happen? So I am replacing this by D. I reach here. Now how do I proceed from this point? Can you find a pattern on the right hand side which in this string which matches right hand side of one of the productions? So it appears that the choices I made okay, took me to a situation where we said that this string actually to begin with does not belong to the language which is specified by this one. May I request everyone that from next class onwards, either you reach here on time, you know that there's a class at 9. There is no reason to plan. I mean, you know that you can plan everything five minutes earlier. So either reach here on time or don't come to this class. I mean, it clearly disturbs. We have a 50 minute class of which we have already spent seven minutes and people are still coming in. And I'm sure, I mean, next five to 10 minutes, this will keep on happening. I mean, you know that there's a class at nine. I mean, I can't understand why you cannot come at nine. I mean, if you wake up at 6.30, if you wake up at six, if you wake up at eight, wake up five minutes before that and reach here at nine. I mean, I don't see any problem in doing that. But this habitual habit of saying that if there's a class at 9, I can always stretch it to 9.10. If there's a class at 12, I can stretch it to 12.10. If the class is at 2, then I can stretch it to 2.10. It's just not an acceptable situation to do. Okay. So next class onwards, make sure either you're here on time or you're not here. started making these choices. Okay? So at some point of time, suppose I made slightly different choices. Okay? 
then let's see what could have happened. Okay. So when I was so rather than going in this direction, let me just keep this here and try to write rest of the strings on this side. And when I say that this reduction happens, okay, to A, I am going to this situation. Okay. And now when I made this choice, I was saying that match this B as the right hand side. Instead of that, I make a different choice. And I say make this match this ABC, which is the right hand side of a production, and then replace it by its left hand side. So if I do that, I'm going to get a string like this. And now, again, if I look at right hand side pattern here, which is D, which matches right hand side of a production like this, this gives me B. Okay, and I get a string like this. And this matches now right hand side of the first production, the whole thing. And therefore, I reach the start set. Okay. And therefore, I can conclude that the string I started with is a valid string in the language. Okay. I can show it from this string, uh, these steps. But only problem which happened in this part was that at some point of time, rather than making this as a choice of matching, I made this as a choice. Right. Now that's an issue. Okay. So the same thing, like if you recall, we were saying at some point of time when we were doing top down parsing, that there were two issues which production to use and which non-terminal to expand. Here the issue is going to be which substring to match. Okay? And if I have more than one choices, then somehow I need to find a strong enough method of doing this kind of reduction, okay? which will always identify that this is the right string and this is not the right string to match. Okay? So this is what is going to be the part of building a bottom-up parser, that when we process this grammar, somehow this information will be captured here. Okay. So is this point clear that two different choices can lead to a situation which are entirely different from each other? Okay. So this is what is captured here. Okay. But let me also simultaneously observe okay, that if I look at this complete reduction, and I also look at the rightmost derivation of the string, starting from S, okay. then I actually am doing a derivation which is not leftmost but rightmost, leftmost was what we did in top down and it gives me the same string. Okay. And now if you see the steps here, okay, this actually is the rightmost derivation that means what I am doing is I am going in reverse of rightmost derivation. Okay. Now I won't go into the proof of saying that if you are building a bottom of parser, then the reduction has to be in the reverse of rightmost derivation. That is a result you will have to take for granted. I am not going to discuss the proof of that. But this information somehow will be captured when we start constructing the parser for grammars like this. When we start constructing a bottom of parser for grammars like this. That bottom of parsers are really the reverse of rightmost derivation. Okay. Now, these are also traditionally known as shift reduced parsers. Now shift reduce, somehow I mean you can get this feeling that when you are talking of shift and reduce parser, you need to use a stack. But basically what that means is that I can take any string okay, and when I say that I am taking a string like this and I want to do a reduction, conceptually I can see that there are some parts I have seen and once I have seen some part then I am doing a reduction. Okay. So let us put some imaginary symbol in middle of a string and let me call it dot. And then we say that two parts which are separated by the special symbol dot, when we say that because I am doing now a reverse of rightmost derivation, then the left hand side of, <coughs> of dot is going to be a string of terminals and non-terminals. And right part of what is on the right of the dot is always going to be a string of terminals. So look here what is happening. Okay. If I say this is the derivation I am doing, then first I derive this, then from this D I derive this, then from A I derive this, and then from this A I derive this. Okay. So at any point of time what was happening that I was saying that I will be somewhere here, and then I say, said that I am going to replace this, then my dot must have been what I was just reducing here, then this dot must have been here. 
and then this dot must have been here. Okay. Now imagine that somehow this dot appeared in these positions in my string. Then what was going on? Okay. What was going on was that if you now see the right hand side of the dot, you only have either a null, which is the final state, and you are going to have only a string of terminals here. But what you have on the left hand side is a string of terminals and non terminals. So basically, one way to visualize this is my start state is that I will always start when I say that I am beginning. Uh, this is where I started with that to begin with, my dot will be here. And then I'll say I'll keep on shifting this dot along the string. Okay? So let me pick up another example and keep this example alive so that we can do this comparison. But basically what we are doing here is that at any point of time, if I say that this is the kind of configuration I have. Okay? Something like this. Okay? So what this configuration is telling you is that I have some string of terminals and non-terminals on left of dot and what I have on the right hand side are basically just a string of terminals. Okay? And now when I say that I have something called a shift action, shift action says that the symbol which is immediately on the right of dot must be shifted to the left of dot. Okay? So my configuration after this is going to be something like this or if you are confusing W with the whole string, let me just replace this by R. Okay? my configuration will be something like this. And what will be reduce action? Reduce action is saying, now see the example there, that if you see something which is immediately on the left of dot and which is matching the right hand side of the production, then we say that I'm going to do a reduce action. Okay? So reduce action is saying that if this part of this, starting from here, matches the right hand side of the production, match that and replace it by its left hand side. Okay? Now let me also sort of alert you that when you talk of a bottom-up parser, bottom-up parser is not as intuitive as the top-down parser. In top-down <coughs> parser, what you could see immediately was that you were starting from start symbol and by having a look ahead of one, you were able to figure out which production to use. Okay? Bottom-up parser to begin with will be slightly non-intuitive, but as you get into it, you'll start getting the concept and you'll start getting the visualization. So be alert on this part that Somehow you will find that this imaginary position of dot is going to create a lot of confusion till we really give the definitions. Okay? So initially, my input is that dot is on the left hand side of the string I'm trying to match. And what is the final position? Final position is going to be that on the right hand side of dot is going to be null, and on the left hand side of dot is going to be start symbol. Okay? So my Final position is going to be something like this, which is here, okay? and initial position is going to be something here. And then I have to see that what are the situations under which I do a shift, and what are the situations under which I do a reduce. So for example, I was, in this case I said that do a reduce, take it to B, but when I shifted dot here, then I was saying don't do a reduce here, okay? but keep on shifting and then do a reduce. Okay, so you have a choice between doing either a shift or doing a reduce. Blank faces. I can see it's not making sense. Okay, so raise questions. So what is the problem? What is it that at least in this part we have not understood? Magically, how dot is shifted? Is that the sort of issue which is creating problem in everyone's mind? No, nothing. I have not said anything. So in that case, uh, when uh, we first reduce A in both in both the both the cases. This the right side or this side? Yes, on, on both the cases. Okay. The, right. When the dot is on A on the right side of A. Okay. And no. Uh, dot is not on the right hand side of A. Dot is on the right side of B. And then I said that whatever is on the left hand immediately left hand side, starting from this position, it matches right hand side of a pattern. And I reduce that to it. So either I could come here or come here. So now, uh, now in the next step, the dot will come on the right side of B. So dot will come here yes. or dot will come here. So uh, in the uh, in the down, you reduce B to capital A, mm -hmm. and uh, in the other way, you again shift it. Again shift it. So yes. means why not reduce there and why reduce? Exactly. There? So question is that if I have a choice, 
and the choice is saying that I do a shift or reduce. Okay? One of the choices led me to a wrong conclusion saying string does not belong to the language specified by the ground. Okay? But this choice made sense because I could reach my start symbol. Okay? So my parsing method should make sure that I am always making the right choices. So how, we, how did we decide that right choice? So that is what the parsing method is going to be all about. So as I said, right, right now there is some magic happening. Okay? Like we did in top down parsing, we said somehow I am going to use this rule for production. Which rule? That I did not much later. Right? So I computed all these first with follow sets and then I was able to <coughs> pin down that if it was, this is the non-terminal for expansion and if this is the look ahead symbol, then use this rule. Okay. Similarly here, we are saying that if dot is in certain position, that means what I have seen on left of dot and what I am going to see on the left of dot, uh, on the right of dot, that is going to determine whether I have to do a shift or reduce and if I have to do a reduce, then which rule I should use for reduction. If I can answer that, then I have a pass. Should we check all the production? Should we? Check all the production. Eventually, we will have to somehow. Okay? But right now, no. Right? right now, I don't have a pass table. Once I create a pass table, <coughs> then I will not have to check everything. Then I will be able to deterministically say that take this action. Only one action. No backtracking. So what is the first step? Let's see. Sir, in which D is getting reduced to A. This one? Sir, upper one. Here, B was getting reduced to A and then? Sir, are we shifting the dot in this step? Not shifting. I mean, reduction is one action, shifting is another action. They, these are two separate actions. <coughs> so when I said that my dot was here, dot will remain here. Right? So what I have done is, I found a pattern which is on the immediately left of dot. And I found that pattern matches right hand side of production and I just replaced that by its left hand side. Similarly, when I found that on the left hand side of dot there is a pattern which matches a particular production, then I just replaced that and I kept the dot here. Okay? What I have not shown in between is that from this I must have done this shift before doing this reduction. <coughs> So these are two separate actions. I either do a shift or I do a reduce. So let's do one thing. Let me take an example, take you through a full set of shift and reduce, and then we'll come back to this answer. Okay? So shift reduce parsing is it will have two actions. Either I can do a shift which says move terminal symbol, which is on the right hand side of dot to the left hand side of dot. So if this is my configuration. It says alpha dot p q r, then after shift this is going to be alpha p dot q r. So p has been shifted on left <coughs> of dot and then I have a reduce action which says that if I match something which is on the left hand side of dot and this is, this pattern matches right hand side of a production, then I am going to reduce. So if this is the pattern I have which says alpha beta dot p q r and beta matches right hand side of a production then and the production is a going to beta then my configuration will be alpha a dot p q r okay, so this is what my reduce action is so in this case i have reduced beta to a in this case i have shifted p to the left of dot okay. these are the only two actions i have there is nothing else okay so i keep on doing this mix of shift and reduce till i reach either the start symbol or an error state Part symbol means that I am in the accept state saying that this is a valid string, error state saying this is not a valid string. These are the only two conclusions I can get. Okay? So let's look at this example and try to pass this particular string. Okay? So again, I'll just try to work it out for you so that you can at least get a feel for what is going on. Okay? And what we have is we're trying to say that I have id star ig plus id. Okay, this is my start string and my dot is here. Okay. And the grammar is on the top, it says e goes to e plus e or e goes to e star e or e goes to y. Okay. So what I will do now is, first I will do a shift. So my action is shift which says that it now becomes
my string becomes of this configuration. Okay. And then I do a reduce, okay, because I find that immediately on the left of dot there is a pattern which matches right inside of a production. So my reduce is by action saying that id gets converted into e and my configuration remains this. Okay. Now once again I do a shift action and I say that e star dot id plus id is the configuration. Okay. And then I do one more shift okay, and this shift takes me to a configuration like this. Okay. And then I do a reduce action which says that so let me underline whatever I am matching when I do a reduce action. So here is an ID before I went to reduce action here is one ID which I now do using a reduce action and then it takes me to something like this. Okay. Now I have a choice okay, whether I want to shift or I say that E star E <coughs> matches right inside of a production and therefore do a reduce action. Right? So what I decided at this point of time is that let me do a reduce action. Okay. Now I'm not telling you why I'm making this choice, why I'm reducing instead of shifting. Okay. But let's assume that this is the action I take then what happens is this becomes my configuration. Okay. And then I shift once again okay, and shift action gives me a string like this. Okay. And then I once again shift and this shift gives me this configuration. And then I decide that I want to do a reduce. Okay. And if I do a reduce, this gives me e plus e, and then I want to do one more reduce action matching this, okay, which gives me now e dot, okay, and this is my start symbol. Dot is immediately on the right hand side, so I say this is a valid string which I have identified through an action of shift and reduces. Okay. Now you can also see in this case, okay, suppose when I had this choice of saying that rather than doing a reduce here, I did a shift. What would have happened? <coughs> would I have reached this state finally? So let's try that. What was the second alternative? In this case, when I was doing so, let's let me say that I am in this state, okay, which is E star e dot plus id okay and rather than doing a reduction i do a shift okay so if i do a shift what will happen i will get something like this i do one more shift and that takes me to <coughs> this state now i do one reduce and deduction is now on this. So this gives me this configuration. Then I do one reduce, which says I match this as the right hand side. Okay. And remember that matching I always want to do immediately starting on the dot position. Okay. So I will not find a string like E star E and I say I will match that, but I will always find a string which is immediately on the starting from left of top. Okay. So this will give me this reduction and then if I now do a reduce that still gives me e dot. So I would have reached the same conclusion. Okay. Whether I did a shift or I did a reduce. Okay. Now you almost have an idea perhaps okay, that why this would have led to the wrong things and this is the right set of steps I took. So is the second set of steps correct or the first set of steps correct? And why? Because of precedences. Okay? You find that if I am trying to, if I know that this is multiplication and this is addition, then this has higher precedence and I want to make sure that this gets evaluated first 
okay, before this. And therefore, if I follow this sequence, then I am doing things in right order. If I follow this sequence, although I will reach the start state and I will say this is a valid string, but I would, do, I would be doing computations in some wrong step. And therefore, I feel really quick at the time of code generation. Then I will say that my code is incorrect. Okay. So I somehow need to take care of all my precedences and associativities also while specifying my grammars. Okay. And so here is what we have just gone through that finally I reach this e dot step and I say this is accept. I am just doing shift and reduce sections. Okay. Now trick here is as I said that when I start with this string, when to do a shift, when to do a reduce and then which do to use for reduce, if I can answer that then I have a path. Okay. And my whole algorithm is going to be based on what equivalent to if I try to look at top down parts are equivalent to saying the first end follows that computation, I do some pre-processing here, I do some similar computations and try to take this grammar and encode it into a parse table so that I can always deterministically take that action, which will tell me that whether I am doing shift or reduce. Is it beginning to sink in now? At least somewhat more clear than <coughs> when we started with. Okay. So continuing on shift reduce parsing. Okay. Now let us also start simultaneously start talking about the implementation. Okay. So whatever is on the left of dot, I can keep that on the side and whatever is on the right of dot, that can be by input state and dot really is nothing but the input pointer and that is also telling you what is your look ahead. So look ahead is going to be the symbol which is immediately on the right hand side of the dot. Okay. That is the first symbol you will see in your input. Okay. And top of stack is always corresponding to this dot and shift pushes a symbol which is a terminal symbol on the stack and what does reduce do? Reduce really takes something which is immediately <coughs> after the dot or left of dot which means which is on top of stack which matches right hand side of a production and if it matches right hand side of a production what action do I take? I am going to pop all those symbols and I am going to push the left hand side on the stack. Right? This is what I am doing here that when I say that E plus E <coughs> matches right hand side of the, sorry, <coughs> star E matches right hand side of a production, I am going to pop these three symbols on the stack and I am going to push E on the stack. That, what, that is what my reduce action is. Okay. So this is what we do and the most important issue we want to raise here is when do we want to shift and when do we want to do a reduction. Okay. So reduce action should be only done when we know that and this is where now Let's start thinking about the first example I gave. Okay? That there was a situation <coughs> where I was doing a reduce action on B, reducing that to A, and that led to a block saying I cannot proceed, and I came to a conclusion saying that this is a wrong string. But if I did the right set of reduce actions, then I was able to reach the left hand side, okay, uh, which is the start symbol. So therefore, we are saying that reduce action I should take only if the Reduction is going to take me somehow to the start symbol if it's a valid string in the language. If it's not a valid string, then it doesn't matter. It, it, it will never take you to the start. Symbol, okay? So this is somehow is this is a fact which needs to be captured somehow when I start creating my parse case. Okay? So let's look at some of the properties of bottom-up parser before we go any further. Okay? One that this is more powerful parsing technique as compared to the top down parser okay? and this class of grammars is known as LR grammars. It is more expensive than LL1 or equivalent LL and when I say expensive, expensive in terms of creating the parse table. Okay? I have to put in more effort to create the parse table. Parse table also is going to be larger, it is going to occupy more space. Okay? As far as parsing itself is concerned that is going to be still the linear time. I will not do any backtracking. Okay? So it's more expensive than LL1 and therefore from trade-off point of view you can see that it can not only handle left recursive grammars but it can handle almost all programming languages okay. and therefore this also remains the method of choice for creating parsers for most programming languages and also it is a natural expression <coughs> of writing the programming syntax. So for example when I had these left recursive grammars like E going to E plus or P, okay. 
my top-down parser was not able to handle that, and I had to rewrite my grammars into this form. Okay, so let me just write this form. Now you can see that if you read this grammar, okay, it's not very really natural to figure out that what you're talking about are part of the expression grammar. If I read this, I can immediately figure out okay, what I'm talking about. Okay. So this is a much more natural way of expressing a language than this kind of notation, which is non-left recursive. Okay. Because top down bottom parsers can handle left recursion. That will not be an issue for them. Okay. Also, there are tools available. In fact, the first tools which were made, first automatic parser generators, were made for bottom of parser. So YAC is a prime example, which was perhaps the first tool for bottom of parser. Also, another interesting thing is that when it comes to error recovery, bottom of parsers guarantee that it will never do a wrong shift or reduce. The class of bottom of parsers, which will immediately catch an error as soon as we go encounter, rather than saying discard certain symbols. The error recovery method we looked at. Okay? In this case, we immediately be able to pin that down, okay? and therefore it will always lead to better error recovery. Okay? So these are some of the properties. Okay? But as we go along, you will find that we'll be able to then look at these properties, and these proper properties will just stand out as we construct the parts. Okay? Now let's also simultaneously look at what are the issues I may face in a bottom of parts. Okay? So the first question, which you have not answered, is that this when to shift and when to reduce. Okay? So in this case, I was doing a reduce, and in this case, I was doing a shift. I should be able to clearly answer that, and then I should also be able to say that which production I want to use for reduction, <coughs> because there may be situations where I may have more than one right-hand side matching of a production. Okay? So sometimes I can have this reduction which says x goes to epsilon, which can always be done, okay? but we don't want to do that. Okay? So this question needs to be answered very clearly, okay? and sometimes parser can reduce in different ways, like here. Okay? It can reduce in different ways. So what you have to remember here is that if I take stack, okay? so look at it this way. So let me just explain this point, and then because when I'm doing, oh, I think let's keep this example. I'll go on that side. Okay? So there's an important example which is a running example for us. So suppose this is my stack. Okay. It has a lot of symbols. Now when I say that I am matching right hand side of a production, suppose this is top of my stack, okay. I can say this matches right hand side of a production and this matches right hand side of the production. Okay. My grammar can have such patterns. Okay. That means somewhere I say that if my stack is containing some string delta, which is a string of terminals and non-terminals, I want to divide this into two parts, okay? and this really is, in one case, this is the division, in another case, this is the division. Okay? So what is the right kind of division? Okay? This my parser needs to answer. Okay? So this basically is saying that, suppose I say that delta is my stack configuration, and input symbol is A, then shift obviously will give me delta A. Okay? But when I say reduce, okay, Reduction can happen that I can either take this part which matches right hand side of the production or I can take this part which matches right hand side of the production and this my parser will have to figure out. Okay? So what we start doing now is that how do we keep track of what is the length of this. So if I say that I can have a combination of alpha and beta and multiple combinations then how do I keep track of the length of this. Okay? Whether this is the right size or this is the right size. So what we will start doing now is we will start giving some definitions so that at least we start building the parser. So after raising all these issues, let me give the first definition. Okay? And that is what I call as handle. Okay? And handle is, a handle is something which has two properties. So handle is right hand side of a production. If I now look at this, okay? so what I was really doing was, I was matching this ID. Okay? I was matching this ID, then I was matching E star E. So handle is something, a string that matches right hand side of a production. And the second part, which is more important, is that if I replace this right hand side of a production, then it is going to give me a step within the reverse of rightmost derivation. Okay. So unless these two conditions are satisfied, something cannot be designated as handle. So 
this was precisely the problem. If you recall that first situation I had, first situation was I started with this, and I said this matches, and I replaced this by its left hand side, and then I erroneously said I am going to replace this by its left hand side. Okay? So it matches right hand side of a pattern, but if I look at the reverse of rightmost derivation, then this replacement was not giving me the reverse of rightmost derivation. And therefore, this was a wrong choice. Okay? And therefore, now, if I want to define my shift reduce parking in terms of handle, I can say keep on identifying handle and keep on replacing handle by its left hand side. If I keep on doing that, because I am doing now, what is the handle now? This is saying it is going to give me a step in the reverse of right post derivation. So eventually it will lead me to the start symbol. Okay. No, today I mean things don't seem to be registered. See, if something is not clear, you need to raise a question. Because I mean I can make out from your faces that you're not understanding, but I do not know what is it that is not clear. So unless you ask a question, <coughs> I will have no clue of what is not clear. So yeah. So this right move derivation is the expected right move derivation of the string. So no not there's nothing like expected right move derivation. There's a rightmost derivation of this. So there is a unique pathway from S to W. Yes. But we don't know that from, uh, uh, I mean, before we start passing, we, we don't, don't know that. We don't. So how can we say that uh, that, that uh, like replacement was not a... I'm not saying, I'm just giving a definition. I'm not giving you a method, is it? Right? What you're talking about is a method. So somehow this information will have to be captured in the method. That each time I do a reduction, Somehow that is going to lead to a reverse of rightmost, a reverse step in the rightmost derivation. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, suppose in that previous example the input string had been id plus id star id. Id plus id star id. Yeah, okay. then according to the same rules, we would have taken id plus id to be an expression and then uh, its multiplication with the expression. But that would have defied the laws of physics as well. What? Why would you say that? So let's let's look at this. So if this is this is the string you're saying? Okay. So what will I do? Okay. What I'll do is I'll start from here. I'll shift this. Okay, and then I'll do a reduce, then I'll shift this, then I'll shift this, I'll do a reduce, and then I'll do either a shift, continue to shift this, and then shift this, do a reduce, then replace this, and replace this. Which one is right? So, like, e plus e, we are reducing e plus e to e, or so we will shift again to right? So, you tell me which is right. So I have multiple choices here, right? So, right. one of them is wrong. If it shifts, then it will be according to rightmost, but it will not break the PC. So that means this grammar is not in a form where I can generate strings without any problem. And what is the problem here? So what was the problem when I had more than one leftmost derivations? What was that problem called? Ambiguity. So I have the same problem here. So in bottom of parsers, it's not that I don't have ambiguous grammars. This actually is an ambiguous grammar. So I want to make sure that my grammar is in a form, okay? and therefore I wrote that e goes to e plus p. My grammar is in a form where it's not ambiguous, whether I do a leftmost derivation or a rightmost derivation. But my grammar is ambiguous, then I can always come up with more than one parsing. But that's not taking me anywhere, right? So I need to make sure that in case of ambiguous grammars, I somehow define in my parser saying that this has higher precedence than this. Okay, and therefore when I had this choice between either doing a shift or reduce, then I make the right choice and say that, no, don't do a reduce, do a shift first, and then do reduction. That would have resolved the problem. So the problem was something like this. Suppose my configuration at some point of time was this. This would have been the configuration after some time. Okay. Now I have a choice saying that either I do a reduce or I do a shift. Okay. But because I defined somewhere that this has higher precedence than this, 
this would have resolved in favor of a shift. And a shift would have left to situation like this. And then if I do a reduction here, this is the right reduction. How can I give? Precedence in grammar. So you don't give precedence in the grammar. You use some tool to give a precedence. Otherwise, I said the method should be rewrite the grammar so that you don't have ambiguity. It will always give me only <coughs> one leftmost derivation or only one rightmost derivation. Okay? And therefore, I'm writing my grammars all the time, which is in this form. Right? This grammar is not ambiguous. This will always give you only one leftmost or one rightmost derivation. But if I write grammar like this, then in grammar I cannot write it. But if I use a tool, then I'll be able to use something like this. Okay, and which said that these have same associativities, and this is higher precision than this. But this is part of a tool, not part of the grammar. But grammar is ambiguous. Okay, and therefore, best method I said was write grammars which are unambiguous. Right? This is the first thing we talked about when we discussed grammars. Start the dot from the right hand side, then it then wait, 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 wait. 
it's not that I mean you can start drop from the right, right hand side or in the middle or anything. Right? Doesn't matter. Okay? And we always scan our input from left to right. So I'm not scanning my input from right to left. Okay? So you cannot start from an arbitrary place. <coughs> wait, wait, wait. No, wait. This, you're going into a territory which you have neither discussed or neither, for which we don't even have proofs. So it's not symmetric, first. I mean, look at it this way, that I defined the concept of a look at it symbol when I was reading it from left to right. Yes. Now, can I say the same thing about reading from right to left and say that rather than look ahead symbol, I have a tail symbol? No. So symmetry does not apply here really. So let's stick to the method and not say that I can put dot anywhere arbitrary in any arbitrary place and if I start from there. I mean, then I mean you can say that why go through this parsing method? I'm talking about a specific parsing method. There are other parsing methods okay, which will not even worry about dot, okay, which will give you all possible parse tables. And it will say that doesn't ambiguity is not an issue because I'll use NQ value items and I'll give you all possible parsers. There are parsers like that. Okay. But we want to discuss a parser which in a single pass in linear time will give me whether a string belongs to the language or not. So I'm discussing that method. I'm not talking of any, any parsing method in the world. I'm talking about a specific parsing method which is a bottom-up parser which falls in the class of LR. Okay, so there is a parser called early parser which gives you all possible parses. But that takes n cube time in terms of number of symbols. when parser runs, not when parser is constructed, when parser runs, because it is giving you all possible parsers. So let me keep doing that thing. And we'll keep on saying, okay, this is a possibility, here is a possibility, here is another possibility. Now you choose. So natural languages where you do not have such clean <coughs> interpretation of the precedences and associativities, they may have, depending on the context, they may have different associativities, we try to use those parsers. But in programming languages, we don't. So let's do one thing. Okay? I think we'll have to <coughs> do it in two passes. Okay? Let's move slightly ahead and then keep coming back till this issue gets completely resolved. Okay? Because if we get stuck at a point, okay, we may not be able to at this point of time if it is not clear. Okay? At least by taking an example, it will become somewhat clear. Bottom of parsing, LR parsing, you know, always is an issue. I mean, it takes time to sink in. But once it sinks in, then I mean, you'll be fine with it. So let's look at what a handle is and what we are saying is that if I say that I'm doing a rightmost derivation, what that handle means is that if S in a step of rightmost derivation takes me to a configuration which is alpha A W and then one step of rightmost derivation says that since W is a string of only terminals and A is the first non-terminal <coughs> on the right hand side, if I see from the right hand side and there's a production which says A goes to beta then alpha a w gives me alpha b alpha beta w okay so this is the rightmost derivation and the reverse of rightmost derivation will be that i look at beta and replace it by e that will be the reverse okay so in this case we say that beta is a handle so beta is not a handle arbitrary but beta is a handle only if such a step is possible in rightmost derivation okay so for example here b is this b is a handle but this b is not a handle so it's not that something matches right hand side becomes a handle, but it should also fulfill this property that it should give me this step. Okay. So let's take a break here today. I'll just finish this. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to reduce only handle and not any right hand side. Okay. And then what is handle pruning? Handle pruning is saying that if beta is a handle, and A going to beta is a production, then replace beta by A, and a rightmost derivation in reverse can be obtained by just by handle pruning. Okay. So the question now is in a bottom of parser, how do I identify <coughs> handle? Because if I can identify handle, then my job is done. Okay. So whole construction of bottom of parser is through handle pruning and by method of identifying a handle. Okay. So 
So that is something we will start discussing tomorrow and then we think by this weekend we will be able to finish at least one version of bottom of one. Okay, so let's break here today and then we can do our discussion from the session.